I got some good sleep last night and you're wide awake this morning. And I hope you're ready to go this morning. And let's have some church this morning. You know what I mean? Let's have church this morning. Amen. Amen. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary's espoused wife, being very great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Father, bless the reading and preaching of your word. I pray, Lord, that you just fill me with the Spirit of God. Use me the way you'd see fit this morning, God. I pray for the hearts of every one of us here. You'd help us to just take your word, God, into our hearts openly and freely. And, Lord, just let it do the work that it wants to do in our lives. Lord, help us to leave here, Lord, knowing what to do, and help us to go out and live and be obedient to what you've told us to do. Father, all of it depends on you. We depend on you to open the word up to our hearts and minds, and also we depend on your strength and your courage to go and live it out before a lost and dying world. We pray, Lord, if there's anyone lost in here today, Lord, that you'd save them. Lord, for the saved folks in here today, Lord, we'd leave closer to you than we've ever been. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, i got a series of sermons going, and it's called Things We Should Celebrate. And last week, last Sunday morning, the thing I talked about that we should celebrate was the day that Jesus came. And we do. We celebrate the day that Jesus came. I mean, the actual time that Jesus showed up. Because you know there's people in your life who have disappointed you in not being where they're supposed to be. But Jesus, he came. He came exactly when he said he was going to come. The way, I mean, the place he said he was going to come, Jesus fulfilled what God had said he was going to do. So Jesus came. And so we celebrate the day that Jesus came. But this morning, we're going to talk about the way that Jesus came. That we should celebrate the way that Jesus came. <clears throat> Whenever you think about people's interests, I mean, whether you watch wrestling, whether you watch UFC, whether you watch um, uh, uh, movie stars on a red carpet, um, all kinds of things, man. You, you think about a bride coming in, a wedding. You think about y'all coming in church on Sunday morning, man. We want to come in. We, you know, a lot of times people, what they want to do is they want to make an entrance. I mean, if some, when somebody's going to make an entrance where everybody's going to be watching, they want everything just right. I'm talking about they want everything just right down to the T. And they want it to be as extravagant as it could be, too. I, I just looked up and kind of Googled greatest entrances of all times, and this little fellow that's 13 years old, he's a little Jewish fella, and they have bar mitzvahs for the coming of age of a Jewish male, I think he's age 13, and so they had this big party. And so this, I'm talking about, they said it was the greatest bar mitzvah entrance of all time is what the title said. I said, i got to check this out. So this little 13-year-old fella comes down on the stage with all these people out there watching and this big thing that they just dropped down out of the sky. And he's got seven dancers out there dancing in front of everybody. And he comes down, and I mean, he breaks it down and shakes it, son. I mean, I, I don't know. I ain't got joints like that is all I can say. But, I mean, he made an entrance, son. I mean, and you think about the kings and the queens of history. You think about when they come in to be coronated, you know, their coronation service, when they, they accept it whenever it's given to them. And whenever they come in, the entrance that they make, think about just a regular entrance the president or someone like that makes in Washington. We were up in Washington um, visiting and going on vacation. The president and them came through at one time. They stopped traffic everywhere. They make a way. They have police everywhere. I mean, I'm talking about they make an entrance. And so when you think about Jesus and you think about the way he came, it's just amazing, and it's just something that man couldn't come up with, just something we wouldn't ever thought of, I mean, just honestly. Um, the first thing I want to talk about this morning is the way he came was in obscurity, in an obscure way. He came. Everybody wants fame and glory, and they want popularity, but Jesus came in an obscure way. You think about this. You know, whenever you, you think about obscurity, it means indistinct to the sight or any other sense, not readily seen or heard inconspicuous or unnoticeable. You think about the majority of the world slept or went about their everyday business the day Jesus was born. You just think about that now. You just think about the Savior of the world. You just think about God Himself made His entrance into mankind, into humanity, into flesh. God Himself came and dwelt among men. It was God's entrance into the world as a man, and He came in obscurity. Most of the world slept. Most of the world didn't know it to even acknowledge it. And I'm telling you, he came in obscurity. And you think about it, they slept, it went unnoticed. And whenever you look, and you think about how our Savior was born, 
I mean, he was there. They didn't even have a place to stay. He was out there. He was born and placed in a manger, you know, off the beaten path where nobody knew. And it was just like, whenever you think about the obscurity of the way Jesus came, people wanted to knock that. I mean, honestly, even in Jesus' day, when he went on to, to come into um, the city later on and make his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, one of the things that people you can see throughout his life, the things that were recorded about Jesus was they doubted him so much because of where he came from and how he came. You understand what I'm saying? The way he came, I'm telling you, he came in obscurity. Everybody wants popularity. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants the glory and the glitz. But the Son of God came and was born, I mean, just a maiden, a virgin, in a, I'm telling you, in an obscure place. God did that. God did that. But let me just tell you something. I just want to go ahead and just kind of fast forward to the end. I want you to understand something. They may make fun of the way Jesus came, and some people may make fun of us because we worship a God who came and dwelt and lived as a man and was born in a manger. They may make fun of the way that he came today, but just let me fast forward to the end. Just let me tell you something that was recorded in Philippians that's going to happen in chapter 2, verse 10. It says that at the name of Jesus, now listen to me now. They didn't just say the name of our God. They didn't just say the name of God. They didn't just say the name of the Savior. They said his specific name in Philippians. Look what he says. He said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every, uh, things of heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Every knee's going to bow. I want you to think about it. Caesar ruled the known world. Caesar, back in the day, the Roman Empire, they ruled the known world. You had to acknowledge Caesar back in those days. I mean, he had all those people, but that was at his time. You think about it. All the great kings, all the great queens, they had their nations bow before them. But Jesus Christ is greater than any king. He's the king of kings. And let me tell you something. He's not only going to have the people that are here and now in the present bowing before him one day. He's going to have all the people throughout history. You hear what I'm saying? All those born before him. All those born after him. Every man, woman, or child that's ever been born. Everything in heaven. All the angels will bow before him. All creation will bow before him. You know, all the things of the earth and all the things beneath. So Jesus Christ, at the name of Jesus Christ, one day, listen to me, they may laugh at you. They may poke, may poke fun of you right now. They, they may look down on you about the way your God came into the world. But listen, let me tell you something one day. They're all going to bow. They're all going to confess Him as Lord. They're all going to take a knee and acknowledge that He is the Creator. He is the Sustainer. And He is Lord over everything. Past, present, and future. The here and now. What you can see and what you can't see. They will all bow before our Lord. Before our Savior. Before our King. So this morning, don't let the way that He came you just take you back. Don't let the way that He came keep you from coming to serve Him. Don't let the way that He came, I'm telling you, affect you in any kind of way. He came in obscurity. He had a reason for it. We're going to get to in just a minute. But He came in obscurity. He didn't just come in obscurity. He came in poverty. The other way that you could easily see that He came was in poverty. This is the King of kings. Listen, listen. Now this is one day... This is one day what's going to be, you know, what we're going to get description of the New Jerusalem. This is a description of the place we're going to be one day. But it's the closest thing we can find the details about like what heaven or eternity is going to be like. So listen to this in chapter 21 of Revelation, what it says. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out from heaven. So here John's recording what God wants him to say about that great city that we'll inhabit one day if you're saved in here today. Listen to, listen to what God had. Listen to what God's place looks like. Listen to what He left. This is what He left now to come and to dwell here on this earth. Having the glory of God in her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a great and high, uh, a great wall, high, and had twelve gates, and the gates of twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And he measured the wall thereof a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall was of jasper. And the city was pure gold. Was pure gold. Like unto clear glass. And the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, chalcedony. This sounds just like somebody's Christmas wish right here, you ladies in the house. <laughs> and topaz and a tenth on Sasperus and eleventh adjacent. I can't even say these things. Much less afford to buy them. 
amethyst, and the street of the city was pure gold, and it was transparent as glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did light in it, and the Lamb is light thereof. And the nations and them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut all by day, and there shall be no night there. That's something like what he left. Don't you understand that's the place he was at? Don't you understand that? That's the place he was for all eternity? Before the day that he stepped foot on this earth, before the day that he came and was born and laid in a manger? Don't you see the way that God came? That he came in obscurity? That he came in poverty? Listen to me. This is what he came to. Luke 2, 6 says, And it was so that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, talking about Mary. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. He left all of heaven and he came and lived in poverty. And listen to me, you may think that's just a coincidence all the rooms were full, that maybe they had money, but they just wasn't a place that they could get at the time. But listen to this. Matthew 13, 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Mark 6, 3, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were all offended at him. And listen to this. When a Jewish boy on the eighth day he was circumcised, they went and they had to make an offering. They went and they had to make an offering. Listen to what it says in Luke 21. It records what went on with Jesus and his family. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, talking about Jesus, when he was eight days old, his name was called Jesus, in which was so named the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens up the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of do- total turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now listen, this is, this is what he says about that. A pair of turtle doves. The law of Leviticus says this. You are allowed to substitute... Those turtle doves for a sacrifice of a lamb as a burnt offering if you could not afford a lamb. So it speaks to the poverty of Joseph and his spouse wife that they had to offer turtle doves. Do you get the gravity of that? He, he inhabited it. And lived in a place where they walked on gold. Yet he came and lived a life where they could afford it. Walls of jasper, gates of pearl. He didn't need the sun because the light of the glory of God so shone. He stepped out of his, I'm telling you, his glory was veiled. And he put himself, submitted himself under the authority of the Father. So he could come and be born in a dark, dirty manger. Laid in a manger. And live in poverty. If that's not enough, man, I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. Think about this. Think about this. The Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. He said, foxes have holes, birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, walked this earth without a place to lay his head. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? When Jesus and when Peter needed an offering to the temple, let me just tell you something about the temple tax. Jesus sent him out to take the coin, gold coins out of a fish's mouth and perform a miracle so he could go and pay the temple tax. He walked in poverty. He was born in poverty. He walked in poverty. The God of all the universe, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who created every diamond that you're wearing this morning. When you look down at that diamond, just think about it. Jesus was born into poverty. The one I'm telling you to put the sun into the place that it's at so that people could go out and many of you farmers could get those crops and have the money to, to go home and live in your house with the electricity and the bed that your family can enjoy. And Jesus Christ didn't have a place to lay his head. He was born into poverty. But let me tell you something. He not only came in obscurity and poverty, but let me tell you something else. He came humbly. 
He came humbly. Think about in, when the Last Supper, think about whenever the Lord went to uh, the end of the Last Supper, when the Lord got up and he girded himself, Jesus girded himself with a towel. And he got up from there. And he went and he, he dipped it down. He dipped it down into that basin of water and he started washing the disciples' feet. He came so humbly. He said that the Son of God came not to be ministered to, but to minister. He came not to be served, but to serve. Jesus Christ, the God of all the universe, the one that deserved the praise of everybody and everything, and one day we'll get it like the book of Philippians said. He came and He served. He washed people's dirty feet. He cleaned up people's dirty lives. He walked so humbly. Listen to what Isaiah 53 has to say. Flip over there. If you want to read something about Jesus Christ and the way that he, he came and He lived on this earth, God used the prophet Isaiah to reveal it perfectly, what the Lord was going to go through. It says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. He came humbly. He came humbly. He wasn't on the uh, cover of Life magazine. He wasn't on the cover of Time magazine. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as we're faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He came so humbly. That is God. This is what happened to God. This is how God lived while he was here on this earth. He came so humbly. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Listen to this. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He humbly carried our sin. He humbly carried our cross. He humbly carried our pain. He humbly carried our shame. He humbly carried the wrath of God to the cross of Calvary and satisfied the wrath of God I mean, so perfectly that we could have peace with God and have a relationship with God and be in the family of God and enjoy the things of God and be blessed by God with the gifts of God. Amen? So that He could pour out His grace and His mercy upon us. Amen? That's what God did. He came and lived so humbly. He was oppressed and He was afflicted. Yet He opened and not His mouth. Can you imagine God's Son, the perfect Lamb of God, the Lamb without spot, the Lamb without blemish, the one person that no matter what anybody accused him of would be perfectly innocent, had never committed a sin, had never been disobedient to even the will of the Father in heaven. He had perfectly lived his life. Yet the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the perfect spotless Lamb of God, when it was poured out upon him, when he was pushed, when he was battered, when he was bruised, he humbly, he humbly carried the cross of Calvary. He humbly took those things for us. He humbly did it. You see, he came in obscurity. He, I'm telling you right now, he came in obscurity, he came in poverty, and he came humbly. But there's a reason for the way that Jesus came. John 3, 16 says what? He said, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth on me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever. See, Jesus, any man could come. You hear what I'm saying today? Man, I don't care how poor you are. I don't care what you ain't got. Any man King, he came as a servant. Any man can come. Sit there and you think about you think about this now. Jesus came. Jesus came. He came obscurely, he came in poverty, he came humbly. Think about what Isaiah said about when Jesus came, what happened to him. Jesus wasn't worried about what everybody thought about the way that he came. Jesus didn't let it bother him. There's probably some people in this building this morning that God's dealing with your heart about being saved. God's dealing with your heart about coming to him. Think about it. Jesus did what he did. Lived the life that he did in front of the whole world. The whole world. 
so that he could be so that he could be with you so that he could have you he wasn't worried about what his neighbors thought his own family turned on him for goodness sake he wasn't worried about anything else he wasn't worried about the doubters or the haters he came the way that God would have him to come see they probably some people in this building this morning you sitting there and you worried about the way you're going to come you worried about the way you're going to come and you're going to let the way you're going to come keep you from coming because you're worried about what you ain't got or you're worried about where you've been and what you've done hmm so many people so many people are so worried because everybody knows them everybody knows who they are everybody knows what they've done where they've been you're so worried about what those people are going to think. Because you're going to come, the way you're going to come is from a past that is sin filled, that is godless. I mean, that brings shame to your name, brings shame to your family, brings shame to your whatever. You think that God wouldn't accept you because of the way you're coming. I'm just here to tell you this morning that just an old sinner saved by grace. Somebody God reached down and picked up and cleaned up and lifted up that God can save anybody. Jesus came the way he came so that any man can come. You hear me? I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what they say when you walk up here or whenever you lean down or bow down at your house or at your pew or wherever you're at before Almighty God and you start living a life for God. I don't care what they say. I don't care that everybody's watching you. Praise God they're watching you. Because what they'll find out is the same thing they found out with me and a lot of old boys in this place. That is the real deal. That God moved in and when he moved in, he changed your heart. He changed your wants. He changed your lives. And that wicked past that you come from, it's just going to bring more glory to God. Amen. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be scoffers. There's going to be doubters. There's going to be haters. But thank God that Jesus Christ wasn't worried about a religious crowd in his day. That he took that cross, and no matter what the high priest said, he stood up on that hill and took our sin and our pain. And I'm telling you today, I ain't ashamed. I don't care where I came from. I tell you that the grace of God and the blood of God can cleanse you from any sin. I'm telling you right now, he'll clean you up, he'll pick you up, and he'll lift you up the same way he did me. All you got to do is believe and take that step of faith this morning. Amen. Can I get an amen in God's house? Come on, amen. He did it so any man can come. He was born in a manger. A dirty manger. The son of God. A carpenter's son. Any man can come. John 3.16 also says, says whoever, whosoever. It also says the sins of the world. He did it so any man can come. He did it so every man can come. Every man. Every person needs Jesus Christ. Every person needed what God bought that day on Calvary. I don't care how good you think you are. See, there's some folks in here today that they won't come because they're worried about the way they're going to come is coming from a dirty path. But there's also some folks in here that won't ever come because they think they're better than their neighbor. I'm just here to tell you this morning from the Word of God, not from my heart, not from my mind, not from my lips, but from the lips of God, that every man is born a sinner. We're born with a sin nature, and there's not a person that's ever lived on the face of the earth that could make his way to heaven on his own. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Every man needs Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary so that every man could have a way. And God has made a way for you this morning too. To humble yourself from your stinking self-righteous pride and get down here and admit your need for God and let God go to work in your life. Amen? You may be better than your neighbor, but you ain't perfect. I mean, I can go down to Ten Commandments. They'll nail you every time. Won't you? you ain't even got to go to number 11. I'm just telling you, most of us ain't got to go to number 2. Some of you ain't even got to get halfway of number 1. Y'all in 1A instead of 1B. He done got you. You done got you. You know what I mean? So we need to just quit kidding ourselves. We need to come this Christmas, and we need to celebrate. Not just because of the day he came, but the way he came. Because he made a way for any man, folks like me, and every man, some folks like y'all too. Man, that's just some good stuff, ain't it? And I'm telling you, we're fixing to have an opportunity to come down here and just to thank God for what he's done in your life. Thank God for the chains he's broke, for the things he's took you from, the places he took you to. And you know what? If you've never given your life to God, it's a perfect opportunity.
you to come down here with God's people that's already praying and give your life to Christ. I'll be right down here waiting. If you want to pray the sinner's prayer and really commit your life to God, to Christ, I'd love to show you in the Word of God how you can be saved this morning. And you know, if you just need a little bit of help, a little bit of prayer, to just kind of get you along the way, you're saved, but you're struggling right now, we'd sure love to pray with you too. I'm telling you, God is at work in this place this morning. I'm excited to be here because I know at this moment, God's fixing to change hearts and lives. Not through me, not through any other person that's working in this building today, but through the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And I pray you'd listen, not to me, but that still small voice speaking to your heart today. That voice of God that's been speaking to you all those days before. That you just, just listen to Him, this will be the day. This will be the day today. So let's stand together. And you come as God leads.